can't be over yet. It is. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No, I'm going down. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? Okay. All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? Yes. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did uh, doors close uh, automatically behind him wherever he went? And for uh, that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they He's simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that it had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is all a dream! <laughs> oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His okay. workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job, he wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon, I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing mm. buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying, and began to gently float above the ground. <laughs> then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. <laughs> appeared, it was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head, dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. Yeah. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking yes. about how it's describing my thoughts. He thought. Okay. And while he thought it all very odd. Ah, uh, what the hell is this? All people in their dreams. But Come on. That of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Mm. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Mm. Now hearing the voice speak these words, he's such a boy. Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, uh. surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, <coughs> the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, Come on. it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. All right. Okay. And he began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is uh... Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay, black. <laughs> everything this is went the story black. Of a woman named Mariella. Hmm? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, 
for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. Mm. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real uh... and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay. Uh, what happens now? Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. <clears throat> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded <clears throat> the terrible truth that his boss had okay. been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two eight four five but of course stanley couldn't yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck amazing oh he awesome. stepped into the newly opened passageway Okay, now we go forward. <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Hey, don't mind control me, what the fuck? I, I have no choice to go over here. Please tell me I'm going to mind control you guys. The lights on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Awesome. Hmm. Now the monitors jumped to life. Nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building <laughs> and his co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Okay, there is nobody here. Hey, what the fuck? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? 
Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Mm. No. Okay, what are he we going to find to up here? He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? <laughs> Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it, it is thinkable. Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Yes, because he is ruled over he the me. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. I'm moving him. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Ooh. Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for Ooh. all. Hmm. No, I want to control them all. Hmm. There's nothing I can do, right? But can't I find my own? Oh wait. <laughs> I think I know. What the f Nothing happens. Bravo. Well, let's use. Ooh, the bone here. Okay. I can't open any of these doors. Then I go to fasten with the power. And when at last he found the source of Oh Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Yes. Stanley, <laughs> I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode. What? Eliminating the entire complex. No. Not long until detonation then, hmm, let's say um, two minutes. Whoa. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Oh, fuck. It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mm. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them, I turned off the machine, I set you free. 
Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit okay. there in your office forever, pushing buttons no. endlessly and no. then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, okay. though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. Okay, I must hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next mm, go shut up. will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? Thank, These are thank you. Additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't go oh, fuck. Oh, dear me. What's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> okay. Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment, but here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, okay. fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to strike. Oh, shit! 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No end here. Just no, no, boom. no, you will, will not. Will you desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment... They activate this shit! Shit. I was too late. I I could deactivate this shit. Well, what's happening? Oh, well, I think this is the end. Or is All of it? his co-workers were gone. Well, what yeah. Mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room, perhaps. And that's it for today. Goodbye, everyone. Have fun. I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy the rest of your day.